Today I'm answering your questions about New York City, from homelessness and if the city is in decline, to the best attractions and a lot more. You don't want to miss it. So let's dive right into these questions. I've been to New York five times, twice before COVID, three times after COVID. I feel a big increase in homeless people. The drug problem has also increased. How is your feeling? Thanks and regards, Maurice from Germany. I get a lot of sentiments like this, especially from people that haven't visited New York since after the pandemic. Homelessness since COVID has been on the rise in just about every single US city. Now, as far as seeing it rampant in the open, yes, it exists. And you will especially run into people who are homeless and outside in Midtown Manhattan, which is why many tourists tend to think that it's this huge problem, that it's everywhere. And I'm not trying to downplay the seriousness of the problem, but in my eyes, it's something that you have to deal with visiting a big American city. And if that bothers you, then you probably shouldn't visit New York. And as far as the drug problem, rarely I will encounter open use of drugs on the street. And I'm not talking about marijuana here. That's a whole different topic because that's legal. But actual open drug use, yes, you could see it. Not as common unless you happen to walk down the wrong street at the wrong moment. I hate to point fingers at other cities, but I will give you an example. In New York, there's always people out, and that is another reason I feel safer here versus, let's say, Los Angeles, where you walk around downtown LA and most people are in cars. So I think there is that strength in numbers in New York, walking around at almost any hour, there's always gonna be other people around. And that is something that I've always loved about New York, even with all the problems that the city has. Is homelessness and drug use up? I think it is. Is it something that'll affect a tourist here? Probably not. Is Manhattan, Brooklyn, or Queens the best borough for Chinese food, specifically dim sum? Based on your experience, I'll be visiting this summer. We are steps from Manhattan's Chinatown right now, so I know this one the best. I love Manhattan's Chinatown, but honestly, always loved Flushing. For whatever reason, I think Flushing has the best Chinese restaurants, and if you're adventurous enough, to go out there from Manhattan, it's very easy to do. I would actually pick Flushing over Manhattan for the best Chinese food. You always talk about casual hole-in-the-wall eats, but what are some of your favorite fine dining restaurants? I'm not much of a fine diner. The reason I cover a lot of casual spots is because that's normally where I go. But I will tell you one that I went to recently that I love. It's called the Ivory Peacock. Their cocktail bar slash restaurant. Their cocktails, gin inspired, fantastic, but also the small bites that we had, like tuna tartare, truffle lobster salad, all these little things. Ivory Peacock right now is my favorite fine dining experience in New York and would be perfect for any of you looking for a really nice date. Where is the best place to use a bathroom for free? not having to buy something. I mean, if you're in the most touristy parts of the city in Midtown, any hotel lobby, you should be able to use the bathroom. If that's not possible, you could also look at any of the transit hubs, Penn Station, Grand Central, Port Authority, or my personal favorite bathroom in all of New York City, Bryant Parks, which is too clean to be in Bryant Park. It's like stepping into a luxury hotel's bathroom. Best way to get around, Uber, subway, or walking? Coming for our first visit in April. You could do all three if you're staying in Manhattan. I think most of what you're gonna do is walking. You, in theory, wouldn't need to take any public transit or Uber once you get to your hotel in Midtown. If you're just staying in that tiny little bubble, which I hope you don't do, I think taking the subway is easy enough. We're gonna get to this a little bit later with using all of the apps. I think it's perfectly safe to take it at most hours of the day. So I would say your best bet is a combination of all three. Can you still go to the Chrysler Building? You know, since 2020, they have been planning on opening a new observation deck there. And I swear, it's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, top secret. I have no idea what is going on with the observation deck. When it opens, you know I'm gonna be there the first day, if it opens. But in the meantime, you can walk into the lobby. It's beautiful, Art Deco style. I've actually never done it, so you've given me something to do right now. What's the coolest hidden gem in each borough? This is a really fun question. I'm excited to answer this. All right, in Manhattan, I'm gonna go with the Cloisters up in Washington Heights, because even though it's part of the Met, 
many tourists don't know about it. And it's like stepping into an old castle, of course. All the medieval art is fascinating. We'll head north to the Bronx. I'll say Arthur Ave, which has the best Little Italy in the city if you wanna check out something that is way more local than it is touristy. Staten Island, I'm gonna go with Snug Harbor. They have this beautiful botanical garden, 19th century buildings. Brooklyn, I'm gonna say Brooklyn Heights, walking the promenade, walking that area because it's so close to all the touristy sites of Dumbo, yet most tourists will skip it. And lastly, Queens, I'm gonna go with my usual answer, Jackson Heights. They have by far the best street food in the United States, maybe in the world. What's your favorite thing about living in New York? The easiest answer would be all the access you have to food and culture, but I don't wanna go with the easy answer. I actually wanna say the people. I think the people that live here are so interesting, so cool, so open-minded that that's one of the big reasons I'm still here. And especially the native New Yorkers, the people born and raised in the city, they're really my favorites. Favorite Broadway show you've seen and Adriana's. All right, I asked Adriana, she said The Lion King was her favorite. I just saw it recently. My response, it was decent. I think it's great for kids. My personal favorite was To Kill a Mockingbird. I saw it in 2018 when Jeff Daniels was starring in it. It was phenomenal. I thought to myself, this is the reason I go to Broadway to see performances like this. And now I've got a surprise for you. Bringing along a special guest, we've got Megan from the Megan Daily. A licensed New York City tour guide. I'm also a performer. My fiance is a music director, and my stepdaughter actually played Matilda in Matilda on Broadway. So in terms of choosing a show, my current two favorite running shows on Broadway right now are Hades Town and Six. There are currently 41 theaters on Broadway. And in terms of choices, you have shows that deal with very serious topics that are relevant to current events today. You have comedy shows, but in terms of you know, recommending a show that everyone's going to enjoy, I say that everyone's gonna have a blast at the Disney shows, so Lion King and Aladdin, and also Wicked. All right, Megan, as a tour guide, you probably get this question all the time. Do you tip everywhere? As in also when you buy a dollar pizza slice or just coffee, is it only when you have lunch or dinner? Tipping in my country isn't that common. It makes me quite nervous and it makes a lot of people nervous. I would actually say it still makes me nervous because I feel that tipping is always changing in the United States and also even within an industry. A lot of times there's not an agreement on how much one should tip. But I would say that in America, generally, um, no one's ever going to be offended if you give them a tip. And if they can't take a tip, they'll tell you, but they're not going to be insulted that you offered. In general, if you give 20%, that's a really good rule of thumb. 20% of whether or not you're getting a drink from a bar, at a nail salon, taking a tour, 20% you're going to be pretty safe with that. And something like dollar pizza. I've seen a lot of dollar pizza places, you know, they'll, they'll only take cash. There'll be a little bucket that will say tip. And then you'll know, okay, they, they want a tip and you can round up to the nearest dollar. Uh, my opinion is I, I don't think you need a tip for dollar pizza where I do think you need a tip. Tell me what you think is a, a barista coffee shop. I'll tip a buck for that. Yeah, I mean, it, there's always this debate, right? Like if someone puts a cookie <laughs> in yeah. a bag and hands it to you, is that something that's worth tipping? And, and I find that very recently, um, when you go to check out, there's a thing that says, do you want a tip? The terminals, yeah. And I'm like, oh no. And I read an article in a magazine recently that said, you know, you're basically, if you want to be polite, you're always going to tip that 20%. And I was like, what? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, see, I won't tip on a water if I happen to pay by credit card. I think that's ridiculous, but if someone's taking the time to make a coffee. It looks good. I will tip for that. What about hotels? I am the biggest fan of concierges ever. I think that concierges are an invaluable resource that will help you get your very best travel experience. And they actually work really hard. They work going to these restaurants, going to these attractions, knowing if you, the guest, are going to like them. So if they get you a seat at a restaurant, if they book you an awesome tour, if they get you great Empire State Building tickets, tip them. And I would say a dollar per bag if someone's bringing your bag to your room. If you need a tour guide, this is your girl. So you can visit my website, themegandaily.com, or find me on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at The Megan Daily. What is the best Greek food to eat in New York City? I can't tell you the best restaurant, but I will say the best neighborhood, Astoria, Queens, which has one of the largest 
Greek populations outside of Greece. We've shot two videos in Astoria just on Greek food. One cool spot, Frankie's Souvlaki. They do these lamb skewers on sticks for just a few bucks if you need something fast. Check out those videos. That whole area is Greek foodie heaven. What footwear would you recommend? We plan on walking rather than the subway. All right, I actually asked somebody that walks more than any New Yorker I've ever met, Action Kids, seven to 10 miles a day. And he said to buy the New Balance Men's 1300 trail walking shoe. And I trust this man's opinion on all things walking because that's all the man does. I am completely intimidated by the subway, so end up paying a lot for cars. How does a first timer learn how to use a subway successfully without looking like a puppy and possibly ending up like one. Well, the good news is it's 2023 and there are so many apps that I think can save you these puppy moments. Google Maps is really accurate in New York City, especially with train times. I personally love City Mapper because it'll even tell you where on the subway car to board. But my best advice for you is that if you're new to New York or visiting here, don't run and jump on a subway car if you're not sure which direction it's going. I've heard too many stories of people making mistakes on taking the wrong express train, losing 15 to 30 minutes. Make sure the train is going the direction you want before you get in. How has New York changed in the last five years? My best answer is that more places have closed and it's even more expensive. Best NYC attraction you've ever seen and why? From the tourist perspective, I'm gonna go with a tie between Summit 1 Vanderbilt and the Statue of Liberty Crown. Now, Summit 1 Vanderbilt is this immersive observation deck. I think it combines the two so well. You have the ability to see the city. You also have the ability to take part in some immersive art as well, which I think is so cool. Then, the crown of the Statue of Liberty. I never thought that I would enjoy the Statue of Liberty so much, but just going inside and seeing how it was made and going to the top and looking outside the crown, it was also snowing that day, so that added to the charm. But for whatever reason, I always push it hard. Crown of the Statue of Liberty, if you're going anyway, book those tickets on statuecruises.com as far in advance as you can. So worth it. If you're visiting the city anytime soon, you need to watch this video about what the new attractions are for 2023. A lot of fun stuff. Head here next.